Hey everyone, Social Solipsist here for another episode of 52 and 52, and this week I'm taking a look at Metro Last Light. Um, now this is an interesting uh, game that I'm looking at now, given that um, I played the original Metro 2033 uh, a couple of years ago now. Um, I want to say four years? Um, I, had, I thought I had actually put some or all of it on the channel. Turns out um, I definitely didn't. It's possible I mentioned it at some point or another, but as far as I can tell, I never put any footage up. Um, but yeah, this is the sequel by the same developers. It is based on uh, a book series, um, and frankly, it's fantastic. Um, I played the original uh, 2033, and I really enjoyed it. Um, for all of its issues, uh, I thought at its core, it was a really excellent game that did a lot of things really right. Um, and I think this one really continues in that vein. Uh, I'm going to try and not drone on so much about it uh, as much as I did in the, the last episode about Gigantic. Um, partially because, uh, you know, not, not just drone on. But also because um, there's more about this game that is very, uh, very much about the experience and about... Not wanting to spoil anything, not wanting to co color anyone's um, uh, view of what the game is or or ought to be. Um, so, for those of you unfamiliar with the series, you play as Artyom, uh, who is a member of a faction in the underground of uh, post apocalypse, uh, post nuclear apocalypse Russia. Um, where a number of different uh, groups have taken over different parts of the of the metro, of the subway, whatever your uh, preferred term is for it, um, the underground, uh, and are vying for control and just you know living out their lives and various other things like that. Um, and he and Artyom, your character, is part of a neutral faction that acts um, essentially as a as a police. Um, they basically do it for nothing on the basis of, well, if we keep everybody from killing each other, um, we benefit just on the basis of people aren't killing each other. Um, so everybody sort of gets along with him. Um, but obviously in the original game and in this one, um, you know, you don't get a good game out of no conflict. Uh, so there are, um, there's a lot of interesting stuff that they do with... Uh, various set pieces and the interplay between different factions and individual players within the factions. Um, I, I'll be honest, I don't remember the plot of 2033 super well, um, but uh, I certainly remember enough um, to, to remember that they are they're in many ways similar in terms of um, their story structure and and those sorts of things the the types of themes that they that they play on um but i think this one goes a little bit further in terms of uh imp improving upon the original um both in the gameplay and the visuals um sto and the story that it tells uh that said there are a you know few little bits here and there that are uh, you know you wonder whether it's it's going on a little long or whether this particular section needed to exist but certainly never to um never to a point uh that it bothered me in any way um so anyway to get on to get on with the the review a bit um you spend a lot of time um combating both mutants uh on and off the surface where you have to um keep yourself uh you have to keep uh a gas mask on to avoid being you know poisoned by fallout doesn't make a whole lot of sense but just roll with it um uh but also fighting with various factions within the metro um who are after you for various reasons um there's a lot of great work done here uh in terms of um the combat is very very solid uh, in many ways, um, not only in the gameplay itself, um, but there's a limited selection of guns that all have very good reasons for being there. Um, there, I think there are a few more in this game than there were in the original, but not by a significant margin. Um, so if you're a fan of the original, you'll, you know, be working in familiar territory. Um, 
but they they add a bit more there's a you know a, a few there's a little more varied combat um in in that sense um but uh you also have you know modifications you can make to your guns like that and all of these things make a lot of sense um that is the number one thing i want to say about this world is this is a very natural world that makes sense um i don't really know how to put it a lot better than that without um starting to spoil things but everything you run into ha seems to have a good reason to exist like why is this why is this shitty gun the way it is oh well there's a whole story reason there's you know universe in universe reasons why this gun is like this so on and so forth um uh you know the 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 political conflicts between the various factions all have a reasonable backstory that's not um ignored nor blown out of proportion um you know it, it that that's the other thing is that it, it, both both this and 2033 knew exactly the extent to which um they could bask in their world and which parts they needed to gloss over and never to its detriment um it knew exactly where its budget was and how to spend it um and all that sort of, sort of thing um this is made by a uh, Ukrainian developer. Um, to my knowledge, they've only made the Metro games. They may have made some other things, but um, I think the only things of note that have made Western releases uh, are, are these two games. Um, and there's certainly a little bit of the like Eastern European jank going on, um, but certainly not to the extent of most. Um, in a lot of ways, I would say that this game is the best version of a mix of things including um uh fallout the fall the the best parts of fallout the best parts of stalker um and there was one other game that came to mind but for the life of me now i can't think of it um but uh and that's for a lot of different reasons but mainly because it's you know a post-apocalypse uh, post post-apocalyptic setting that feels incredibly well lived in and incredibly believable like i mentioned before um you you really well maybe you don't i i won't speak for everyone but i spent so much time both in this and the other game just observing the world as it went on around me because there's so much time and effort put into the color of the world the the way that npcs act people you could walk by in half a second and never pay any attention to and you know a a, a, a lesser game would simply ignore the necessity of even having them exist let alone be a full-fledged character with you know a, a backstory you can see in five minutes and uh, a depth to their their voice acting um that really you know belies the history they tell um it's it it gives me feelings that you would not expect to have from a first person shooter camp campaign about russia um in the post-apocalypse it's it's really surprising in that way, um, amongst others. And uh, along with all that, I think it does a really good job of um, giving you good reasons to make moral decisions. Now, I know this is a uh, uh, something that a lot of people have a lot of strong feelings on, and I'm not going to say that this has a an incredibly in-depth like decision-making process. Um, but both games do change um, their endings based on how you behave in the game, um, how you decide to play Artyom. And it's not only the endings, um, you know, people react differently, uh, you know, the, the players around you, the people say things, um, NPCs, if I recall correctly, you know, reference events that did or didn't happen based on, you know, how you cleared out an area or some such thing. Um, yeah, and I'll I'll try not to say any more to avoid avoid spoiling anything. Um, 
Yeah, so, I, I mean, the other thing about it is for its age, I, I did play the original version. So 2033 and Last Light uh, are both a number of years old now. I want to say, I actually don't know, which is embarrassing. I should have looked that up before. Hold on, let me see if I can figure it out really quick. Uh, Last Light was originally released in, oh, it's newer than I thought, but 2013. Um, and then it got uh, both it and 2033 got a re-release uh, a year ago, two years ago, um, the Redux versions that um, basically compiled the the games and, uh, you know, all the DLC and all that um, and certainly rebuilt some things. Um, I've been told that the, the 2033 Redux is um, a, a sizable upgrade, but um, the Last Light one is less so. Um, but yeah, uh, it looks amazing. Um, there are some issues with it. Uh, you know, there's, because you're constantly in darkness, it is not the perfect system I have yet to find. I mean, it's certainly quite good. Um, but it is far from perfect in terms of its, uh, its like light and darkness perception. Um, you know, you sometimes walk into some areas and go, what the hell am I looking at? Um, but that said, they do a, a, a fairly decent job, better than fairly decent. They do a, a quality job, um, with management of like light resources, things like that. Um, you know, you gotta charge up your battery. It's, it's a very reasonable, um, charge battery thing where, Hey, every five minutes, you gotta pull out this thing for five seconds, crank it, and you've got full battery again. Um, and uh, you know, that, that leads back into the practicality aspect of some of these things of, hey, you've got this, um, this, you know, uh, power, power squeezy crank thing that you pull out very rarely, basically just to charge your battery and jumpstart a couple of things. Um, but it's this brilliant piece of engineering that barely needed to exist. Um, they easily could have gotten away with not having it in the game. Uh, but they built it and they made it make sense in this world of this is something people have to do all the time. They have to provide their own power. They gotta do stuff. Um, and you look at the device and the thing that they built makes sense. And, you know, even pulling out your lighter to, to ha like get a lesser light and look around and burn off cobwebs and stuff like that. It's just, it's fantastic. And I know I'm getting rambly and just kind of gushing about it. Um, and that is not to say that the game is without its flaws. But I highly recommend that if you enjoy uh, a first-person shooter that doesn't just want you to, like, run and gun all the time, that wants you to be smart about your gameplay, that is going to punish you if you don't be... if you're not strategic that um, is going to reward you for, uh, you know, a cool and calculated demeanor. Um, like, this, these, these two games are fantastic, and Last Light I had a blast with. Um, I put about 14 hours into the full campaign. Um, I'm sure you could rush through it, you know, in 10 or less. Um, and that's just for the main campaign. There's a whole uh, block of, DL of story DLC. I don't know how what its full running length is, but it's like another, it's probably another 10 missions. Um, so, I, and there's, I think, 15 or 20 missions in the total game. So depending on how, how long those DLC missions are, um, you know, that could be another e 10 hours of gameplay easily, and I'm absolutely going to play them. Um, but, yeah, uh, this is one of my favorite franchises, um, and, and I think, I think you should play it. Anyway, um, I'm sure I'm forgetting some things that I intended to talk about, but, uh, I won't hold you too much longer. Thank you guys all for watching yet another episode of 52 and 52. I'm the Social Solipsist, and I will see you guys next time. So, oh, young men, I see you like my witty sign. There is a place for everyone in this underground. Murderers, whores, tyrants, money changers, even peasants, for Christ's sake. All are welcome here, even lousy actors. 
I live in a theater where we breathe the miasma of the decaying Balfour. This station is overpopulated with the ghosts of the opera. But is there a place here for the best critic of our once great country? Hell no. I tell the truth. And I am repaid with insults and poverty? I say you are a disgrace to the name of Bolshoi. And they reply, now Bolshoi is us and us alone. They're immune to criticism. They choose money over art. And these poor souls traveling from all over Metro to see the glory of Bolshoi? They are plagued by fools. They say that art only interests the well-fed. But my young friend, I will argue that even the hungry need art. For thinking on exalted matters dulls the pain of an empty stomach. But sadly, true art is 20 years gone. What remains is profane trash. And so my own hunger persists. Will you honor what we've lost by perhaps donating a bullet? Ah, so there are still men, not just marionettes. I disgust myself. Here we sit, drinks, party lights, when all around us radiation, death, decay, and endless war. 